Holy Chapel service will start in... service. If you're able to stand, please stand. Let your glory
like, good morning. question I would like to ask even before, I, even before I get started. And the clock back there says 9.05, 9.06. Am I correct? Okay, so won't nobody call Pastor Thomas if I be through by 9.45, will they? <laughs> okay. I know before 10. <laughs> Where's my sister Marjorie? She be setting me up, y'all. Y'all, I love her, but where's she at? Sister Marjorie, where you at? She oh, okay. I love, I, but I love you though. You know I love you. <laughs> y'all pray for me. I had a hectic week this week, and so, but I know that God is the deliverer and He's a promise keeper. So first, give my reverence to God and honor to our pastor, Reverend Doctor, in his absence, to the first family, and to our first lady, Sister Ruby Thomas, uh, to my brothers and sisters in Christ, and to my brothers in the pulpit. Just thanking God for another day, another opportunity. Because it's just so much just going on in the world. And... Um, the only thing that we can do is just pray, pray, pray. So if you would allow me for just a few seconds. I'm not in the senior choir, and I'm not in the inspirational choir, and I'm not in the sanctuary choir, and I'm not in the combined choir. But I had a preacher, a pastor, that told me, said, if you don't have a song, you can't preach to the people because sometimes you need to sing for yourself. And that pastor was none other than the late Dr. Dawson of Blue Mount Calvary. So he gave me pearls of wisdom and I do pray for his daughter, Pastor Sandra Dawson as well in her stead. So if you allow me for just a few minutes, I just want to do, I know I've been changed. And I don't mind a little bit of help, because I know we've all been changed <laughs> at some time in our life, amen? I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed, you know the angels in heaven done sign my name. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. I I've been redeemed, you know the angels in heaven done sign my name. Follow me down to that old Jordan stream, you know the angels in heaven done sign my name. I stepped in the water, the water was cold. Know the angels in heaven done sign my name. It chilled my body, but not my soul. You know the angels in the heaven done sign my name. I know I've been changed. change. I 
sign my name you know the angels in heaven done sign my name the angels in heaven done sign my name the angels in heaven have sign my name And if you will allow me for a brief moment, um, I'm coming from this passage of scripture, um, and it's in three of the Gospels, and whichever one you get to first is going to be all right. <laughs> but the main scripture is Luke chapter 8, starting at verse number 43 down to 48. When you have it, say amen. 43. <clears throat> A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pe pressing up against you. But Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. 48 says, daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. The subject of my sermon is there is healing in him. Also, I will also be, um, if you want to write it down, I also will be talking through Matthew 9, 20 to 22, Mark 5, 31 to 33. Same story, different book. Oh, gracious and most kind Heavenly Father, I come now just to say thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this day that was not promised to me, but you saw fit to allow me to be here one more day in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I can do nothing within myself, but I can do all things through you, oh God, who strengthens me. Lord, I ask you to hide me behind your cross. Let something be said or done that someone can take home and share with somebody else, oh God. Lord, we know and we realize that all sermons are not meant for everyone, but the one that it touched, Lord, I ask you to let them grow gladly and share the word, oh God. Amen. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So Matthew 9 and 20 starts off saying, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Matthew 9 21 said, For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Matthew 9 and 22 says, But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And just, just briefly give you a definition of him. It's the edge of a piece of cloth or clothing which has been turned under and sewn together. 
You know, sometimes we take the hems out of our ladies, we take the hems out of our dresses either to make them long or to make them short. Um, well, somebody said mostly short. <laughs> um, and the gentleman, uh, y'all have cuffs on huh? some. Oh, we have some hems too. And sometimes your hems be uh, lessened and shortened as well. But there is healing in the hem. Mark 5 and 31 said, And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me. Mark 5 and 32, And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. Well, what makes this so interesting is that so many touched Jesus physically. They were pressed all around him. Only one touched him into his healing power. Her touch was a touch of faith. Knowing that within herself that one touch would make her whole. Can you imagine just one touch can make you whole? And all you have to do is just ask. <laughs> healing is a spiritual gift. But many times, it comes with a physical touch of the hand. You know, t j just touch your hand. Touch your hand. Touch it. T for real, touch it. Touch it. Yeah, just, that's not his hymn. Deacon, touch, touch the hymn. Touch, yeah, touch the hymn. The hymn, the hymn, the hymn. This part right here. The hymn, the hymn. The hymn. This is the hymn right here. Right here is the hymn. Y'all, it's, it's healing in the hymn. <laughs> okay? That's all I'm trying to tell y'all. It's healing in the hymn. If y'all get nothing else, it's he There you go, Deacon. It's healing in the hymn. Uh, this touch was the act of faith, and it, and it took to activate the miracle. Mark 5 and 33 says, But the woman was fear, had fear and trembling, knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Here we see a desperate woman who was sick for 12 long years. Can, can you imagine being 12, six, sick for 12 long years and not knowing what's going on with you? Going to doctor after doctor after doctor and he can't, they can't find nothing wrong? You spend all your money like she did. She spent all her money going to doctors who could not heal her. So I'm assuming at this time she didn't know Dr. Jesus. This type of illness would have kept her from going to the temple. It was really by Mosaic law illegal for her to touch any holy thing. So can you just imagine how she felt? She couldn't go into the synagogue. She couldn't go to church. You know, nobody would touch her. So that's kind of being isolated. You know, that makes one feel bad, and you get depression. And so just imagine, just, just imagine her. This woman's faith in reaching out and touching Jesus' garment was greater than her fear of being punished. You know, sometimes we just have to step out on faith, because if God will take you to it, he'll take you through it. No matter what anybody else say, he'll take you through it. Amen? Her faith, when she touched the hem, of Jesus, Jesus' garment is in the hymn, y'all. Healing is in the hymn. That's all I'm talking about. Healing is in the hymn. Her blood stopped instantly. Her faith in Jesus healed her. Luke 8, 45, and Jesus said, again, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee. And says thou, who touched me? Peter does not realize the touch of faith had flowed healing virtues from Jesus to her. <laughs> Good God. They had thronged Jesus. She had touched Jesus. Big difference. You know, because if you beat on me, I ain't going to touch you. But if you touch me, you know, I can feel that I know that you care. Amen. Luke 8, 45, and Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, I'm just going back over it again. Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou who touched me. Luke 8, 46, and Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, 
for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. So a little bit of something came out of him. The, something came out of him when, her, when his hymn was touched. It's healing in the hymn. This touch was not just an ordinary touch. This woman believed in her heart. If she could touch even the hem of his garment, she would be healed. Her great faith caused the goodness, which is God's virtue, to flow out to her and heal her. Jesus knew because he felt the flow of goodness from her to him. Luke 8 and 47, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. What she had done was really against the law. I'm just repeating before, before I say it, so it means it's important. And she could be severely punished for touching this holy man while she had this issue of blood. If you, uh, in your spare time, you can go to Leviticus chapter 12, and then you can read all about the culture and uh, how that uh, came about. She was afraid, but nothing could be worse than the state that she had already been in for 12 years. And she had humbled herself before Jesus. After begging his mercy, she told the story. And again, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. The name daughter shows immediately that he claims her for his own. Then he brings good news to her because Jesus is the king of peace. He always brings peace to those who have faith in him. This woman didn't get healed. She was made whole. Even in her emotional wounds were healed after she had told him the whole story about her life and pain. And sometimes if we just have a little talk with Jesus, he'll make it all right. Uh, you can come on with him. I'm, I'm going to roll him. He'll just make it all right, because sometimes he's the therapy that we needed, and he was the therapy for her, because he, he listened, because there is healing in the him. And in my conclusion, my brothers and my sisters, I want to let you know that there is healing in the him. You got high blood pressure? There is healing in the him. You got low blood pressure? There is healing in the hymn. You have diabetes, there is healing in the hymn. Dealing with cancer, there is healing in the hymn. Heart condition, there is healing in the hymn. Acid reflux, there is healing in the hymn. Kidney disease, there is healing in the hymn. Respiratory conditions, there is healing in the hymn. Alcoholic problems, there is healing in the hymn. Drug problems, there is healing in the hymn. Mental illness, there is healing in the hymn. Physical abuse, there is healing in the hymn. Monkey pox, there is healing in the hymn. COVID, there is healing in the hymn. No matter what you're going, there is healing in the hymn. There is power in the hymn. There is love in the hymn. There is power in the hymn, in the hymn wearer. And his name is Jesus, the one who came down through 42 generations to save a wretched soul like me. The one who went to a hill called Calvary, where they stretched him wide, they dropped him low, and they pierced him in his side, but he never said a mumbling word. Great drops of blood was falling, and he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hours. Never, 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 never said a mumbling word. But he looked towards heaven. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. He said, Father, into my hands I commend my spirit. He put his head in the lock of his shoulders. And then he died. He died. How many of you know he died? He died. He, he died to save me. I don't know what he died for you for, but I know he died to save me. And I know he stayed in that great grave for three long days for me. He was in there all morning Friday for me. He was in there all Friday night for me. He was in there all Saturday morning for me. 
all Saturday night for me. But early, early, Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands, all power in his feet. All power in his heart. He got up. There's healing in the hymn. God bless you.